This show is brought to you by Ritalin. Ritalin, the miracle drug. If you are hyperactive and have ADHD, let's prescribe you some dexamphetamines, kind of like cocaine or speed or something. That'll that'll help. Makes me very talkative, and this always keeps standing up. Always. And I focus on entirely the wrong things. Now, today, um, I'm going to... Look, have you ever come across someone in real life, right, that looks almost exactly like someone that you know, but... They have nothing to do with them. They're a totally different nationality. But they talk the same, they look the same, they act the same, and it's fucking uncanny. All right? I've, uh, I've, I've seen that a few times in my life. And like I've, I've actually asked people, hey, man, do you know this guy? And like, no, why? They're like, no, no, it's just a friend of mine. But you, know, you look, you swear they were cousins or something, right? Um, now, I had a friend um, <clears throat> called George. He was a Lebanese guy. And uh, George was very straight-laced, very straighty 180, you know, they call him he. Very quiet, only spoke to you when George, business, it had to be business only, right? Um, and I hadn't seen him in a long time. And I started work in 2014 at an engineering firm called Downer. Yeah, I know. And there was a guy there called George, and he looked just like George. But he was Macedonian, and he acted like George, the same body type, the same demeanor. He only spoke when he needed to speak. You know, if it was business only, George only spoke to you when he had a question about work. You know, uh, yeah, had to write some numbers down. Uh, yeah, I get popular. Uh, this lady's number was double one four zero. Anyway, um, so George, George was an engineer. He was an estimator, right? And see, my old friend George turned evil after a while. Um, as he got older, he became a gangster. Like he turned full gangster. So I sensed an evil in George at, at my job because, you know, he looks like George, he acts like George, he must be as evil as George. I, I need to know. Like, you don't understand. I, I need to know. And I love drawing uh, evil in people, not in an exorcist way, but in a, my own amusement sort of way. I like, um, I, I, like, I like making people who don't swear, swear. Just wind them up so much and then say, I knew it, you're fucking human. There you go, right? So George was very, very, very straight. Now... See, I used to play D&D, &D, and uh, I stopped because I don't have anyone to play with anymore. But um, I always chose chaotic good, because I consider myself chaotic good. I'm good for my own amusement, not so much for the other person's benefit. Like, there's been a number of times when I've been at the gas station and I've paid for the guy behind me. And uh, only because I enjoy the confusion on their face. Because, see, I'd, I'd go back out to my car and sit there and watch through the window the confusion and the chaos that takes place when this guy has no idea why some dude just pay for his fuel. And most of the time I take off because that's it. Now, if you think that's weird, um, if, you, if you're having a bad day or you feel down and someone says, hey man, I'll give you, I'll make the rest of your day. I guarantee you that I can make you happy for the rest of the day, but it's going to cost you 50 bucks. You know, would you take that offer? I would. And usually the fuel costs me about 50 bucks. I don't do it all the time, but it's, it's you know, it's whatever. But yeah, it's 90% for my own amusement. And it's 10% for the other person's benefit. I've been caught a few times and they said, hey, yeah, hey, why'd you pay for my fuel? I'm like, ah, oh, just pay for it, dude. I want to do something nice. And I, it'll make my day, right? So George was my mission. I, I, I had to, I sensed an evil in George and I needed, you don't understand, it's a compulsion with me. Um, if I feel that you're not, what you're, what you're showing, there's a little bit more to you, I need to draw that out for my own personal amusement. And I knew George was evil. Now, my job there it gets, it gets, it gets funny. Uh, well, I think it is anyway. I used to design infrastructure for uh, multi-level buildings, uh, network infrastructure. It's called backboning, right? And um, <clears throat> there were some amusing terms involved, like uh, lick, which is leading conduit, which is just a conduit that comes in from the network to your premises. There's manhole. There's penetration, which is a hole that's drilled. It's called a penetration. And there were devices like double enders and shit like that but the thing is because i'm a child you can combine these to make very amusing technical sounding things that are obviously very rude so my job is to work this stuff out count every hole that's drilled every conduit that's run every meter of cable etc design it put it on the front page and give it to george and george will estimate it i'll sit with him he'll go through the whole thing and he'll estimate a cost for what we have to charge our client right so he'll sit there and say, oh, there's a penetration here and a manhole and a leak. And I try to troll George. I say, George, um, how many leaks do you think it'll take to get to that manhole? He goes, oh, well, you know, it's just one leak, really. But then it depends on the size of the building, you know, to get to the manhole. Uh, we might find an existing cavity. And 
George is serious. He's not taking the bait. And I'm like, <laughs> and people around me are like snorting and shit, but George just wouldn't have a bar of it, right? And then on a, another occasion, uh, George is counting penetrations, which are drills, because we charge the client for every whole drill. Goes, oh, this one needs a four inch penetration right there. Uh, so it's a core ball. It's called because they core it out, you know. Like a four inch penetration. Go, okay, George. Do you think the subcontractors um, that will do the four inch penetration um, are confident in their equipment? You know, and George's like, oh yeah, well they're professionals. They do this all day. Like, it just goes over his head. And I, I, I needed George to acknowledge that that this is funny, you know. But to George, it, it wasn't funny. It was just business and people around me are snorting in my pod i mean you know and it, it fucking bothered me you know it, it really it really really bothered me and uh one day i asked george i go george um what's a what's an average lick to get to a manhole like is it a short lick or a long lick what do you reckon and he goes oh again it depends on the size of the building you know uh, it could be 10 meters could be 15 and the frontage and i'm like fuck i, I gave up i gave up you know, I was defeated because I couldn't draw it out of George and it bothered me. And uh, it's, I've, I've never not broken a person and George just wouldn't break. But then I found out through the, the through the, um, I was going to say vinyl leaves, but <laughs> through the grapevine in the office that George mentioned that he, you know, really enjoyed working with me, you know, and he thought of me very highly. So I thought maybe some cracks are showing, but no, no, it didn't happen. And then they hired some new people and there were two people out of this lot for the design team this is network design. Uh, they were Persian women, beautiful women, Sarah and Soddy, right? And we talked a lot, you know, every day, hey, hey, going, good, good, good. But I forgot Soddy's name, you know, and it was well beyond that point where you can just ask someone what their name was again, because now it's been a couple of weeks and it's kind of rude. So I went to George and I sat next to him and go, hey, hey, George, um, the new girl, not Sarah, the other one, um, what's her name? I need to, because I'm just saying, hey, man, hey, you, hey, dude, you know, he goes, oh, uh, sorry, sorry. I'm like, oh, that's right. Yeah, sorry. He goes, do you know what they call her, sorry? I'm like, no. He goes, because she likes to be sodomized. <laughs> he crossed the line. You know, and I'm like, the guys around us, they were like, they fell apart. They were buckling. People couldn't breathe. I mean, this is just within our little pod. No one can hear us, right? And George is like, you know, he's come out of his shell. And I'm like, bro. You cross the line. That's totally inappropriate, man. Like, this is a line you do not cross, man, you know? And then he said, like, I just wanted to be acknowledged. Oh, I, I wanted the silliness of, of licks and manholes and penetrates to be acknowledged. And George never gave that to me. And that bothered me, right? But then George said, I just wanted to be funny like you guys. You're always licks and manholes and penetrations. I'm like, ah, you are, you're fucking human. Thank you. That, that, that's all I needed. That's all I needed, right? But then George was a bottle. So I, I, I awoke the Balrog, man. Because George was a bottle with a cap on it, and now the cap's off. And, man, he's one dirty motherfucker. Because the thing is, like, he just took a little bit of persuasion to come out. He'd come up to me and show me his phone. because hey, man, check this out. I'm like, uh, it looks like two naked midgets about to do something. He goes, yeah, yeah, press play. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not pressing play on that, man. He goes, no, no, just do it, just do it. I'm like, I, I, I don't want to look at midget porn, George. George is into midget porn. And uh, so by association, I was into midget porn. You know, and then he'd do other shit, like, he'd come to me and say, hey, man, uh, oh, all hours of the day, he'd send me WhatsApp messages with just dirty fucking deranged shit, like, dude, wow, like, what the fuck, this guy's just fucked up, and then one day he asked me, he goes, hey, what, what sort of porn are you into, this guy was a porno fiend, man, you know, the most just straight engineer, like, fucking full-on Christian guy, and uh, I go, oh, look, man, I don't, I'm really not into porn. He goes, oh, okay, everyone's into porn. I go, man, I don't actively search porn. I'm just kind of not into it, man. Like, yeah, if there's, I see, you know, you know something you know, on a website and I pop up, oh, she's, okay, I'll click on that, you know. Maybe, but I might sit there and go, oh, what is it, MILF's grannies? I'm like, <laughs> grannies? Like, yeah, it goes, yeah, grannies. I go, like, 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 grannies, grannies, you know. Also, um, for my nephews that are watching this, you better not be fucking watching this. Eamon, you especially, because your mother would fucking stab me, all right? Go away, turn it off right now. Turn around, done. My nephews watch these, and uh, my mother doesn't watch them anymore because she's unsubscribed, so I can I can talk about this shit now. So George George became a monster, and but the thing is, George considered me a friend, and I was kind of scared because um, my mission was accomplished weeks ago, and I had no use for George anymore, but I didn't want to break the guy's heart, man. 
So I just lol at things he sent or like, wow, and shit like that. But I got lucky in the sense where um, about a week or so later, this is about three months in now, uh, they had to make some redundancies, some uh, lay some people off, and George was one of them, unfortunately. You know, So I didn't have to... He scared me. <laughs> to be honest, like his dude was fucking dark after that. It wasn't just porn. You know, he turned into like a fucking... Um, Oh, what's a word for it? Like, he'll be like, oh, did you see Angela's ass today? Oh, those jeans, mate. The things I would do, I'm like, George, come the fuck down, man. He was never like that. And uh, I created the monster, and that's what I do. I uh, I like, um, I like, there's a piece of plastic on the table. <laughs> anyway, so uh, that that's all I had. I thought I'd make his laugh if I could. And uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe. And I do love you because it's it's not raining. Um, for my new subscribers who ask me why do I do this, it's a, it's a trope, it's a, it's a thing that I do. But it's not raining, usually I only make videos when it rains and then it's not raining today, so. Love you, hope you enjoyed it, goodbye.